Flame photometry is also known as flame atomic emission spectrometry. It is a branch of spectroscopy in which the species examined in the spectrometer are in the forms of atoms. A photoelectric flame photometer is an instrument used in inorganic chemical analysis to determine the concentration of certain metal ions, for example, sodium, potassium, calcium, and lithium. Flame photometry is based on measurement of intensity of light emitted when a metal is introduced into flame. The wavelength of color tells what the element is, it comes under qualitative analysis, and the color intensity tells us how much of the element is present, it comes under quantitative analysis. Principle of flame photometry is based on the fact that matter absorbs light at the same wavelength at which it emits light. In flame photometry, substance under investigation is exposed to hot flame in which thermal energy is absorbed by orbital electrons. Upon absorbing high energy, electrons become unstable and they release energy to obtain stable state. Energy is emitted in the form of photons. After emission of energy, electrons shifts from higher energy state to lower energy state. Basic concept and process related to flame photometry is that when liquid sample containing metal salt solution is introduced into a flame, solvent is first vaporized, leaving particles of solid salt which is then vaporized into gaseous state. Molecules in gaseous state dissociate to give neutral atoms which can be excited by thermal energy of flame. The unstable excited atoms emit photons while returning to lower energy state. Finally, the measurement of emitted photons forms the basis of flame photometry. Under constant and controlled conditions, the light intensity of the characteristic wavelength produced by each of the atoms is directly proportional to the number of atoms that are emitting energy, which in turn is directly proportional to the concentration of substance of interest in the sample. This relationship denotes that we can determine the concentration of the substance of interest in any sample through flame photometry. Various metals emit a characteristic color of light when heated. For example, when sodium is heated, it produces yellow color flame and wavelength of emission is 589 nanometer. For potassium, color produced in flame is violet while the wavelength of radiation is 766 nanometer. For barium, color produced is lime green and emission wavelength is 554 nanometer. For calcium, color produced is orange and wavelength of radiation is 662 nanometer. For lithium, wavelength produced is 670 nanometer while the color produced is red. Next are components of flame. Flame is a very important part of flame photometer. It consists of several components. These components are preheating zones, primary reaction zone or inner zone, internal zone and secondary reaction zone. So first zone is preheating zone. In this combustion mixture is heated to the ignition temperature by thermal conduction from the primary reaction zone. Second is primary reaction zone. This zone is about 0.1 mm thick at atmospheric pressure. There is no thermodynamic equilibrium in this zone and the concentration of ions and free radicals is very high. This reason is not used for flame photometry. Next reason is interconal zone. It can extend up to considerable height. The maximum temperature is achieved just above the tip of the inner zone. This zone is used for flame photometry. Last zone is secondary reaction zone. In this zone, the products of the combustion process are burned to stable molecular species by the surrounding air. Success of quantitative determination depends on how accurately the intensity of the emitted radiation represents the concentration of the analyte. It has been found that number of factors besides the analyte affects the intensity of emitted radiation. The analytical signal measured often include contribution from constituents other than the analyte. The constituents are called the matrix constituents. The contributions are known as interferences and are found to influence the outcome of the analytical procedure. Such interferences may be of three kinds. Spectral interferences, 
ionic interferences and chemical interferences. Spectral interferences occurs when the emission lines of two elements cannot be resolved or arises from the background of flame itself. They are either too close or overlap or occur due to high concentration of salts in the sample. Next are ionic interferences. High temperature flame may cause ionization of some of the metal atoms. For example, interference of any positive ion in the sample of sodium. The Na positive ion possesses an emission spectrum of its own frequencies which are different from those of atomic spectrum of the Na atom. So presence or generation of Na positive ion in the sample of sodium causes ionic interference. Next are chemical interferences. The chemical interferences arises out of the reaction between different interference and the analyte. Chemical interferences are of two types cation anion interference and cation cation interference. In cation anion interference, the presence of certain anions such as oxalate, phosphate, sulfate in a solution make affect the intensity of radiation emitted by an element. For example, calcium plus phosphate ion forms a stable substance as Ca3PO4 whole twice which does not decompose easily, resulting in the production of lesser atoms. Next are cation-cation interference. In many cases, mutual interference of cations have been observed, resulting in reduced signal intensity of the element being determined. These interferences are neither spectral nor ionic in nature. For example, aluminum interferes with calcium and magnesium. Next is instrumentation of flame photometer. A flame photometer is composed of sample delivery system, source, monochromator, detector and readout device. Next is sample delivery system. There are three components for introducing liquid sample into the flame. First is nebulizer, second is aerosol modifier and third is flame or atomizer. Nebulizer breaks up the liquid into small droplets Nebulization is the process of conversion of a sample to a mist of finely subdivided droplets using a jet of compressed gas. The flow carries the sample into the atomization region. Most commonly used nebulizers are pneumatic nebulizers. Aerosol modifier removes large droplets from the stream and allow only small droplets than a certain size to pass. Flame or atomizer converts the analyte into free atoms. Next part is source. A burner is used to spray the sample solution into fine droplets. Several burners used in flame photometers uses fuel plus oxidant combinations to produce analytical flame. These burners are premixed, macker, total conjunction, lundergraph, sealed burner and nitrous oxide acetylene flames. This figure contains two types of burners, premix burner and total consumption burner. Premix burner. In this energy type of burner, aspirated sample, fuel and oxidant are totally mixed before reaching the burner opening. Advantage is uniformity in flame intensity and disadvantage is heavy loss of mix up to 90%. In total consumption burner, the fuel and oxidant are hydrogen and oxygen gases. Sample solution is aspirated through a capillary by high pressure of fuel and oxidant and burnt at the tip of burner. Advantage is entire sample is consumed. Next part of flame photometer is monochromator. As we studied earlier, monochromator is composed of three components. Entrance lit, dispersion element, and exit slit. In flame photometer, two types of dispersion elements are used. First is prism and second is grating. Prism is made up of quartz and silica while grating is made up of aluminium. Grating is preferred over prism when higher dispersion is required. Next important part of flame photometer is detector. Detectors used in flame photometry are photomultiplier tubes, photoemissive cell, and photovoltaic cell. 
We already studied these detectors in ultraviolet visible spectroscopy. Check out their specifications and working in instrumentation portion of ultraviolet visible spectrophotometry. Last part of flame photometer is readout device. Readout device is capable of displaying the absorption spectrum as well as absorption at a specific wavelength. Modern instruments have microprocessor controlled electronics that provides outputs compatible with the printers and computers, thereby minimizing the possibility of operator error in transferring data. Following table includes several elements, their characteristic emission wavelength and their detection limits. These values are very important in detection of following elements. Next are applications of flame photometry. Flame photometry is used for the estimation of elements such as sodium, potassium, calcium, lithium, etc. in sample of serum, urine, CSF and other body fluids. Flame photometry is useful for the determination of alkali and alkaline earth metals, used in determination of lead in petrol, used in the study of equilibrium constants involving in ion exchange resins and also used for the determination of calcium and magnesium in cement. Thank you.